Hi, welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantonetti, and uh, we are continuing our study in Gideon, and I hope that you've been blessed by this. Um, we're going to uh, go ahead now and, uh, and just go ahead and put up a few slides because we had some problems with the slides this morning, so we have a few, but the message still remains. So why don't we just dive in, and we know that we've been talking about Gideon, Gideon, the hidden warrior, why? Because that's what he was doing. He was hiding in a wine press, afraid of the enemy, for about seven years. Because that's how long the Lord gave Israel over to the hands of the enemy, the Midianites, because of sin. They continued to do evil. And so the call of Gideon is a very serious challenge. And we know that through this call, God also gave him not only vision, not only strength, but gave him the boldness to go against the enemy. And we're talking about the defeat of the Midianites today. It's the final battle that he uh, exerted when he went against the enemy. This is the final battle today, but it is not over because we still have to deal with Gideon after this battle. And so I think we have two more videos, but we're going to go on. Let's look at Judges chapter 8, verse 18. It says, Then said he unto Zabah and Zalmunna, these were the two evil kings that he was fighting against, the kings of the Midianites. What manner of men were they whom you slew at Tabar? And they answered, as you, so were they. Each one resembled the, ch the children of a king. Verse 19. And he said, they were my brethren. They were my brethren. Even the sons of my mother, as the Lord liveth, if you had saved them alive, I would not slay you. Now, the first thing we want to understand is that the tide of the battle had rolled over in the beginning from where they were to the Jordan. And it's interesting because the Jordan means descend, descend. Like when you go down into the water, you descend into the water. And so that's why the Jordan is called the Jordan, because it means descend. And God already knew what he would be, do, what he would be doing at the Jordan. And so many things happen at the Jordan River. You see, the fugitive seems to have, to have two divided troops or two divided parts. When they ran, the first part, the enemy succeeded in crossing the Jordan and hastened toward the wilderness, while the main body of the army with the women and cattle fled in an eastern direction. So, you know, you've heard the term divide and conquer. Well, that is true. But if you want to save yourself, you have to divide your army so that if one part gets destroyed, another part lives. Jacob did the same thing. When Esau came to him, because he knew Esau was coming. He didn't know what Esau was going to do. He split his family up and he sent them in different directions so that if he killed one part, the other part would live. So this is an old technique, an old stratagem. Gideon used discernment because he knew that the surrounding cities, um, uh, he knew the surrounding cities, excuse me, and he knew the valleys. So he knew how to maneuver his army to the right place and he anticipated where the enemy would be. The Bible tells us this in John chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus says, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgments. Now, the reason that this is important is because if we judge righteously, God will lead us into victory. Just because we judge something doesn't mean that is right. And so Gideon had discernment. Gideon applied godly principles to the war, ensuring him a total victory. Remember, the Lord has spoken to Gideon, and he told him what to do. And so thus, we see that Gideon was following the instruction of the Lord by his word. Now, it tells us also that, and I'm going to go back a little bit because we can do that in the story. In, in Judges chapter 8, verse 16 and 17, it says, And he took the elders of the city and the thorns of the wilderness and the barriers, or the briar, excuse me, and with them he taught the men of Sakaf. In other words, he gave them a lesson. And he beat down the tower 
of Peniel and slew the men of the city. When they neglected Gideon bread and safety for his men and comfort, he said, I'm coming back to give you a beat down. They, they earned it too. So instead of help, the people of Sikoth, that's where he went to get bread, and Penel had an excuse. They didn't want to help or support Israel until the battle was won. That's bad. You got people like that, right? I'm not going to support you until I see the final victory. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened to David's men. One of his warriors, he went to war, and the Bible says that he went out to war, and the people, when he went to, when he went to the front line, the people drew back. He killed 800 men by himself. And after they were all dead, the people came back. Yay! Yay! They took the spoils, and he just sat there. The Bible says that the sword was frozen to his hand. He couldn't even let down his sword. That's how much he fought that day. But Gideon fulfilled the word that God, excuse me, that he spoke concerning the discipline to the people because they had abandoned him and committed treason. And so he uses his threshing skills, that's what I love about this. He uses his threshing skills to bring lashes to the leadership of the city that rejected God. Now, remember I told you we don't go out beat people up because they reject us, but let your success beat them up. Let your light shine so much that people will see your good works and even glorify your Father who is in heaven. And so he also brought down the tower of, at Peniel, you know, Peniel, it was interesting is that the word Peniel means facing God. And so the judgment that they were going to go through was facing God. You know, something I learned in ministry that when you are a servant and you're active, you will meet more opposition, more dangerous, more dangerous situations from false professors than from open enemies. When you, when you see false professors of faith, they're not going to kill you. They'll, 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 they'll speak, but they're not going to come against you. But the open enemies, man, believe me, you will suffer. And going back to verse 18, it says, Then said he unto Zabah and Zamuna, What manner of men were they at Tabar? In other words, he, these two kings had killed men. And so Gideon doesn't just pronounce judgment right away. He says, hey, what, what kind of men were these? And they answer, they said, as you are. In other words, they looked like you and they resembled the children of a king. Because Gideon looked like he was of royalty because he was anyway. So Gideon interrogated the enemy to bring out the confession of murder. Gideon already knew. He was aware that his family was killed by these two evil kings. And Gideon becomes the avenger of blood. Even as the Bible tells us, there are avengers of blood. Watch this. Being the next of kin to these people, he became the avenger of blood of his family. Now, what's interesting in the Old Testament, as we are, Deuteronomy, God spoke about the cities of refuge, Shechem. That was one of the cities. So that if someone got into a fight, let's say, and and uh, he actually was protecting himself and he kills the other guy, um, he, he had refuge by running to Shechem, that city, until, you know, they had the trial, etc. Because someone from the family of the person that he kills might come looking up after him. And even though he may be wrong, he may be right in killing the person, you know, he was justified, uh, the people who who belong to the, to the person that he kills are hot. And so they want to kill him. You ever met people like that? Even though they know that the person was right and they defended themselves, they still want to kill you. And so you had a right to run to Shechem or to one, to the, or one of the cities of refuge until your trial came up and you were proven innocent or guilty. At this point, they had no place to run the enemy. There was no city of refuge for them because they were evil. And so God didn't give them any protection. It's interesting that um, these two, the name of the two kings means deprive of protection. 
Now think about this. Zaba and Zalmunna means deprived of protection. There was no protection to keep them from Gideon avenging the blood of his family upon him. And he said, they were my brethren. Verse 19, they were my brethren. Even the sons of my mother, as the Lord lives, if you had saved them alive, I would not slay you. So he did not go to kill people and murder them. He went to pronounce judgment based on what they did. And let me tell you something. When you're fighting a war, if you don't do it righteously, you will suffer. And you will bring upon your head curses. That's why it's important. Be careful what war you enter into. Choose your wars wisely. Because people are there to hurt you anyway. So he would have been inclined to spare their lives. But watch this. This one cruel action made it possible for him to bring judgment upon them. Verse 20. And he said unto Jeddah, his firstborn. This is the firstborn of Gideon. Up. In other words, rise up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared because he was yet a youth. You know, something I learned is that if you try to appoint someone who's not ready to do something, you will do more harm than good. This was a youth. Don't expect a youth to do a man's job. Don't expect a person who is not a warrior to do a warrior's job. You got people like that. Come on, you can do it. No, they can't. It's not in them. And so you got to be careful. Youth are youth. Adults are adults. Then verse 21 tells us, Then Zaba and Zamuna said, You rise up and fall upon us. For as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose <laughs> and slew Zaba and Zamuna and took away the ornaments that were on the camel's necks. You know, God always leaves spoils behind. But listen to this. They knew that they deserved death. And instead of suffering any longer, they said, hey, why don't you do it yourself? You're the man. You got it. So Gideon kills the evil kings and takes their spoils. And the whole concept of this whole story here, the whole concept of the story is that God raised up a man to go against the evil forces that attacked his people. The whole concept here is that God raises up warriors who are ready to take on the battle to go forth and protect his people. And as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have the same calling upon us. Remember, some are called and then some are hauled. I don't want to haul people around saying you can do it if they can't do it. Stand in the place yourself and do what God calls you to do. He's called you to put on the armor of God. And I love it when Paul says put on the armor of God. The word put on in the Greek means to sink into the armor. It's like when you pour hot fluid into a vessel and then you let it dry, it becomes part of that vessel. And so you sink into the armor. You take on the armor of God. And remember, when you take on the armor of God, expect hostility. Expect yourself to be in a constant battle because the enemy is relentless and he's not going to give up. But you have a power that is greater than any power on this earth. The Bible tells us that you have the name of God. You have the word of God and you have the Holy Spirit living in you. And that's why you are protected in the battle because greater is he that is in you that is fighting. The same one that was in Gideon is in you and he wants you to fight the battle because he has called you to be a valiant and mighty warrior. It doesn't matter whether you're female or male, it doesn't matter. And there's some youth that can actually take their hands and put it on the plow and don't look back. But they have to do that. They have to take it themselves. Don't force people to do what they can't do. And so Gideon learned the lesson of worship. He learned the lesson of, of hearing God. He tore down uh, the, 
the uh, altar that was against God, he broke the asterisk pole. And the people that rallied to him, he, he, he felt that it was good, but not enough. But God gives, gives him a really nice surprise when he says, you have too many people. And God brings him down to the, to the least, to 300 men. God's perfect number. God's perfect way. And the first battle took place on the rim of the valley where 120,000 men ran and they killed one another as they were fighting and running. God was with Gideon because he was obedient to what God told him to do. And if you're obedient, the Bible tells us you will eat the fruit of the land. But as, as Christians, what we have to do is this. We have to put off the old nature. We have to put that off. In other words, stop practicing those things which are against God's truth, God's principles. Remember, we need to learn to trust in God. Trust and obey, one him said. Trust and obey. There is no other way. And so therefore, just like Abraham, the Bible says, and Abraham, when God called him, and Abraham left just as the Lord told him. We have to be obedient and leave those things behind, leave our little toys behind, behind and begin to serve God. We have to seek the righteousness of God because if we do that, everything else will be added unto us. We don't have to look for things in this world. All we have to do is trust. And so with that, I want to leave you with these words. Very important. Very important. The armor of God is given to you so that you may have righteousness on the left hand and on the right hand. So that no matter which way you turn, the battle is going to be fierce. But you have the responsibility of taking up the armor of God and stand in the battle. Don't move. Remember just what God told Moses to do. Stand still. And see the salvation of God. That's what Moses told the people. Stand still. When they were at the very uh, point of the river where they could not go anymore and Egypt was right behind them, the Bible tells us that God, the cloud of God, went between the enemy and, and God's camp. And all night the Lord opened the river. I love, you know what? God could have opened that river in a moment, but he took all night because he wanted Israel to trust him. And no matter how long it takes to open the river where we're fighting, God will open the river and take us to the other side. Joshua did the same thing. And so be, be courageous. Be strong. Don't let the law of God out of your mouth, out of your sight. Keep it in your mind and keep it in your heart. And you will see great things happen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. And we'll see you Monday, hopefully to conclude this story.